Good morning, YouTube, and welcome to the new Week in Review put out by Survival Preparedness for Beginners. And this is just to give you an idea of what has happened in the past week. These will be coming out on Sunday mornings at 8 a.m. Nice, bright, and early. So everybody wake up and grab your coffee and sit down. In case you missed something this week, we're going to try to cover that in this video series. So let's get going. Let's start off with a little fun fact for the day. Did you know that butterflies taste with their hind feet, not their front feet? Also, a donkey will sink in quicksand, but a mule won't. Pretty cool, huh? All right. Now, if you're waking up, this morning, up here in the Northeast, all the way down through into the Carolinas, all the way across the Midwest, Indiana, Illinois, right up through uh, Wisconsin and everywhere else, it's a little chilly out there. You might be wanting to get your firewood split, get it stacked. You probably got a fire going this morning or you turn your furnace on because it's just damn chilly out there, folks. Some places it's down in the 20s and 30s. They got frost and freeze advisories out all across that whole area. Let's just hope that this doesn't mess up with the farmers and their harvests. That's the last thing we need at this point in time with everything else that is going on. Now it's been a little chilly out west in some of the mountain ranges and stuff, which is kind of normal for this time of year. Uh, it slowly starts creeping in in those higher peaks. But for the Northeast and stuff and the upper Midwest, uh, having these frost and freeze warnings this early in the season is just a little abnormal. Usually it comes around October, uh, first, second week of October. So moving on along, as you all probably know, if you didn't hear, we are now in the Greek alphabet for hurricanes. Yep, we passed that. We have uh, Alpha, we got Beta, and um, we're just kind of rolling along with these things. They just keep rolling off the uh, coast out there, or they just form up over in the Gulf. You know, it's like they pop up wherever they feel like it. It's kind of like a gopher. So let's start. There's one little Af uh, wave coming off of Africa. Over the next five days, they only give it about a 10% chance of developing at this point, but that's something that they are watching. Now, right off the coast, out in the middle, kind of almost right in the middle between uh, Africa and the Leeward Islands, we have Wilford. Now, Wilford is a tropical storm, and Wilford was the last name in, in the regular list for hurricanes. So... Wilford is uh, right, right now currently moving in about 17 miles an hour. It's moving west northwest, and pressure is at about 1,007 millibars and has a maximum sustain wind of 40 miles an hour. Now, Paulette is way, way, way up there in the Azores, but it has curved back around and is trying to do a track back south, so it's kind of like backtracking itself here. So we'll have to keep an eye on this because um, right now it was downgraded to just a disturbance. And within the next five days, they believe that it's going to re-strengthen and possibly become another either tropical storm or possible a hurricane. Not really sure where this one's going to go. So everybody keep your eye on that one. Then we got Teddy that's out there <clears throat> kind of southeast of uh, Bermuda. Now, Bermuda usually doesn't get hit by any type of hurricanes and stuff, but they already got hit by one. And this one's going to skirt off to their east, so they got tropical storm warnings that are out posted right now. Uh, the movement on Teddy is northwest at 14. does have max sustained winds at 125 miles an hour, and the pressure is 952 millibars. Uh, it is forecast to go east of the Bermuda, but it could affect the Canadian Maritimes. Now, I would suggest anybody that lives in the Northeast, you may want to just keep an eye on this bad boy because we all know how things can change. And then out in the Gulf, we have Tropical Storm Beta. 
All right, 60 mile an hour max for same winds. Pressure's at 995 millibars. It's moving north at eight currently, but the models and stuff do show that this is kind of gonna just set out here in the Gulf and uh, run around like a chicken with its head cut off. And we're not really sure where it may make landfall. So everybody in the Gulf Coast, please pay close attention to this. Let's move out west now. We're going to talk a little bit about the fires that are going on out there. Um, so far, um, that the fires have burned a total of 6.7 million acres of land. And uh, if anybody's seen the news, you've seen any videos and pictures or anything else on any social media, it is just devastating of that of those areas. Um, it just it it has to break your heart just on you know to know what these people are going through. I'd rather have a hurricane any day of the week than have some of these fires because people in some areas weren't even um, or didn't have time to evacuate and move to a safe area. Now, in just Oregon, there's been over 42,000 people that have been affected. Many of them, them lost their homes while others had to be evacuated. And most of them have been without, left without power or possibly any type of like wanting water and those things. It's just amazing of the damage that has been done in those areas and how some of those areas have been wiped completely off the map some of the small towns and there has been quite a few deaths now let's talk about the air quality because of the fires the air quality out west has been the worst in the world you have a lot of areas where it is very hazardous uh, very unhealthy unhealthy and that's basically stretching from the Great Divide all the way out to the Pacific Ocean. Now, the closer you get to, say, the big cities, Portland, and you come down through there, those areas are getting smacked really hard. San Francisco is faring pretty well. I think they're probably getting more of a breeze um, coming in off the ocean, possibly, that's saving them at this point. Um, so that's a good thing. Los Angeles, you know, their air quality always sucks. So... You know, this is nothing new for them. Uh, the smoke plume and stuff is uh, reaching all the way over to England now. So it goes all the way across the northern tier of the United States and across the ocean. And people have been reporting seeing some beautiful sunsets in some of the areas where they're not really affected by the fires, but they are... Um, the smoke has give them some gorgeous sunsets. So I guess you could say there is something that good does come out of it, out of a bad situation. Moving on over. Now we're going to talk about some of the cleanup and stuff that's being done uh, from Hurricane Sally. And then uh, um, the National Guard and um, those people down there, uh, they had so much flooding. Thank God it wasn't a wind event. Um, a lot of the areas got up to four feet of water. The Army Corps of Engineers are now going in because they have to replace some bridges and try to get the uh, power and everything restored and help with the cleanup. And um, it's just a mess down there. Uh, if anybody knows, if you're on YouTube a lot, and if you know... Uh, survival Living, he lives in Pensacola in that area down there and he has put out a few videos and stuff of the aftermath of the storm. They are uh, quite uh, amazing to see. Uh, he actually does a really good job of showing you how deep some of that water is in his own yard. Uh, the road out in front of his house is pretty much a river. So if you want to check some of that out, that is Survival Living on YouTube. You have in Louisiana, still from the hurricane that they got, there's still 41,000 people without power around the Lake Charles area. 
Uh, that was Hurricane Laura that made fall landfall, and that was back on August 27th. And uh, Oak Island, North Carolina, which was ground zero for Hurricane Isaiah on August 3rd, some rental homes finally reopened by Labor Day. It just takes a while for, you know, you got to clean everything up, you got to fix stuff, you got to get the power back on. And it just takes time. That's why if you're going to be prepared for a hurricane, you need to have more than a two-week supply of your food, water, whatever it is you may need, medical, because you just don't know how long this could take. Now let's move on to some more, I guess you could say, somewhat political news. I'm not going to try to get too political on this channel as far as what I'm talking about, but we're going to talk about some um, things that are going on with China. Uh, private exporters sold over uh, 398 million tons of U.S. soybeans to, the, to China this week. That's per the Department of Agriculture. Um, they reported that the it's a daily sales reporting system that tracks the large purchases. It was the second daily flash sale, as they call it, of soybeans this week to the world's top soybean importer. The USDA also confirmed a net of 1.1 million tons in soybean sales to China in the week ending October 3rd. A record large sales of pork, including 18.8 million tons for shipment this year and 123,000 tons for shipment in, in the fall winter. Now this comes amidst, you know, they've had this whole trade war deal and everything else with all these uh, exports and imports and tariffs and everything else. Um, but China's having to buy a lot of our pork because a lot of their pork is uh, gone. They lost all that with the swine flu. So they have to find something. Um, they have to buy from somebody to replace the pork because that is one of their main meats that they do eat. Now China is also reporting that their 2020 into 2021, um, their forecast for their rice is 8.1 million tons a 4% increase over 2019 to 2020. Rice, um, rough rice production is forecasted at 212 million tons, up 3.3 million tons based on a temporary measure to encourage farmers to switch back to double cropping their rice. So they started off the year with having problems and stuff because of flooding and everything else. So now they have to start to double crop their rice in order to try to make up and meet their demands. Because as we all know in China, they basically all eat rice for every meal. Now the swine flu strain, um, what's been going on with that, because that was a big thing over there that wiped out all their, you know, all their pork, all the pigs, you know. And what the world doesn't need now is, you know, another pandemic on top of a pandemic. So a new finding that pigs in China are more and more frequently becoming infected with a strain of influenza that has the potential to jump to humans as infectious disease researchers worldwide taking serious notice. Now, this is the last thing that we need. So let's hope that they get a control on that. And one other quick little thing with this whole pandemic thing that's going on with the Charlie Victor 19. A little note to everybody out there that likes to spray all your packages and everything else when you receive them from UPS, FedEx, the post office. Um, it's a respiratory droplets that spread the disease. Although the virus can survive for a short period on some surfaces, it is very highly unlikely to spread from domestic or international mail products or packaging. So save your Lysol and use it on something else. Don't have to spray all your packages because if it was that, if that was the case and it was on all the packaging and everything else, 
your UPS, FedEx, and post office delivery drivers, you wouldn't be getting anything because they'd all be sick with the COVID. Just a little food for thought. Now, let's turn to some other exciting news that's going on all around our country. And hopefully at some point in time, uh, we can get a control over this. And we're talking about all the protest and unrest that is going on from Seattle, Washington, Minneapolis, Minnesota, Chicago, New York, Philadelphia, D.C., Georgia, Atlanta, uh, Cincinnati, Ohio, Dallas, Texas, Los Angeles, Las Vegas, and Salt Lake City, Utah. We'll throw Portland, Oregon in there also. They're the ones that are still having all these protests and riots and everything else. I have no problem with people protesting. Just stop burning this shit down and do a normal pro protest. All right, let's move over to some exciting news. We'll throw some uh, baseball scores out there for you. Um, Seattle beat, beat Pittsburgh 6-5. Um, the Phillies beat Toronto 7-0. Boy, they creamed them. Uh, Washington over Miami. 5-0. to zero. Toronto and Philly. Uh, Philly took that one. 8-7. to seven. Pittsburgh and the St. Louis Cardinals. St. Louis took that one. 7-2. to two. Chicago White Sox against the Cincinnati Reds. The Reds, boy, they, they really came back. They beat them 7-1. Uh, to one. They had a big inning in the third. They had five scores. You have the Cleveland Indians and uh, the Detroit Tigers. That must have been a pretty boring game. That was one to nothing. The Indians took that one. So, this has just been a kind of a recap of what has been going on this week in the news. And I just hope that everybody enjoys listening. I'm going to put a little bit of uh, music up there or a video playing so you can just sit back and relax and listen to some of the news that has happened. One last thing that did happen last night uh, or Friday night, um, Chief Justice uh, Ruth uh, Ginsburg, she did pass away. She was uh, 87 and... Um, so now we have to really go through that whole ordeal. And um, they also are cutting the 2020 census short amid the pandemic. So that should be quite interesting considering there's a lot of states out there that uh, uh, depend on that. And one last thing, we're giving $13 billion in aid to Puerto Rico to help build their, rebuild their infrastructure. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I believe the president did say earlier um, in his presidency that uh, he was done helping Puerto Rico because of their, um, their government, the corruption, and everything else. I don't know. Maybe things have changed. But we're just dealing out billions of dollars like it's candy during Halloween. So, this has been Survival Preparedness for Beginners. This is the new program. be coming to you on Sunday mornings at 8 a.m. And it's your week in review. Till next Sunday, you all have a good week. Stay safe, keep prepping, and keep your head above water. Just keep swimming. It's what it's all about, folks. Talk to you soon. Thank you.